Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on Two Can Play That Game I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to play the Pioneers program by GCT Studios. Let's start with how to set up the game. So to begin with, take your game board and then you're going to want to lay this out on the table. Then you're going to want to take all your cards, so there's four decks, you have your waste deck, your market deck, project deck and survivors deck. And you're going to want to shuffle each of these individually and then place them on their corresponding spaces on the board. So we've got our waste deck there, we then have our market deck down here and with the market deck you also want to reveal six cards into the market stall spaces. Then your project deck will sit next to your waste deck here and you'll reveal two of these as your research projects. The survivor's deck, you'll want to deal one card to each person playing. Then, having done that, the remainder you'll sit in the survivor's deck space of the board. Then the dice will want to sit on the dice space of the board. Your round marker will sit on the round one space. Your turn will sit on the first turn space. And then your free alarm tokens, you'll shuffle them up and then put one in each of the alarm spaces of the board. Then each player is going to pick one of the six colours to play as, take the corresponding player board and sit it down in front of them. Also give each player their corresponding HQ card, so they'll have two cards and they need to sit them so that the small HQ is showing on their player board. Also give the player all the tokens of their colour. So firstly there'll be the triangular player token which can just sit beside their player board for now. There'll also be seven of these research tokens and again those can just sit beside the player board. The final token they will need is a victory point tracker and this will sit on the zero space of the victory point track on the main board. Next, sit your free resources near the board. So you have your credits, which have a coin on. The yellow with cogs on is your response. And the blue with the chicken leg on is your food. Now, each player will need two credits and two response tokens. And they will place these in their resource pile of their player board. At the beginning of the game, this resource pile is limited to six spaces. But as the game progresses and your town grows larger, you will gain access to more spaces in which to store resources. But I'll talk about how your town grows later on. The final part of setup is your starting hand of cards. So each player needs to be dealt free market cards and two waste deck cards. They will then analyse these cards, looking at them, hmm, interesting cards, and decide which one they want to keep. They will then put this down, face down in front of them so that no one knows what it is, and then once everyone has done this, they will pass the cards to the player to their left. Then, players can choose to put into play any structures, items, or personalities that they have got in front of them for free. During the game, it will actually cost resources to do this, but I'll talk about that later on. Once each player has decided whether or not they are putting the cards into play, you then look at the cards you have been passed, and once again go, hmm, interesting cards. I will keep this one, and pass to the left. And again, you can choose to put the card that you have just taken into play for free, and then for a final time, you look at the cards you're given and pick one to keep. At this point, you'll have two cards left in your hand and you can just discard these. They will be not used in the game. So that's the game all set up and ready to play. But how do you win? Well, you'll win by having the most victory points at the end of the game. 
and the game will end in one of two ways. Either someone will finish a round with four or more victory points, that'll end it, or at the end of the round after the lit up alarm has been revealed. For example, if the lit up alarm is revealed during the fifth round, the game will end at the end of the sixth round. If it's revealed on the sixth, it will end at the end of the seventh. And if it's revealed on the seventh, it will then end at the end of the eighth round. So I've just been talking about numbers of rounds there. So obviously the game is broken down into rounds. And then each round is broken down into three steps. The first step is actions. And this will be the bulk of the gameplay. This is actually broken down into turns. And you can see here on the turns track, there are three spaces. However, each normal round will only have two turns in, but there are certain cards and abilities that will grant a player a third turn in a round. During each turn, the players will pick a single action each to perform, and they will do this in order of the survivor cards that they've been dealt, starting with the highest number. So whoever has the six or the five, etc., is likely to be the first to act in a turn, and whoever has the one or the two is much more likely to be the last person acting. It's important to note that with these survivor cards, they do have special powers on them, but these will not be in effect for that first round of play. As well as performing their action on their turn, a player may also activate any card abilities that they have down in front of them, playing any costs that might be associated with that action. Also, they can play cards from their hands. So they can play these down, be them events, actions, or adding to their tableau. But every card that they play, they must pay a response token to do so. If you're playing a structure, you'll place it to the right side of your player board in the structures area. Now, your town size is dictated by the number of structures you have. And it's important to remember that your HQ is also a structure that you have and can never be lost. So you'll always have at least a minimum of one structure. And that will need adding into your total number of structures. As you gain a number of structures, your town size will increase. So if you reach five structures, you will reach a medium sized town and this will immediately upgrade your HQ from being a small HQ to a medium HQ and you'll simply flip the card over, gaining extra benefits from it. If you go down in town size, your HQ will of course also be reverted back down to being a small HQ. Also, along the same lines as this, if you reach seven structures, you become an even bigger town. You are now a large town. As such, your HQ will upgrade once more. This time, though, you have a choice. You can either choose to make it a civil HQ, which allows you to play cards for free without having to play response token anymore. Or you can become a martial HQ, which will improve your combat. If you're playing a personality card or an item card, these work very similar to structures, except for they don't affect your town size, and also you sit them below your structures on the right side of your player board. Another type of card you might play is one of these event cards here. And again, you still have to pay that response token in order to play the card. These are all very different, and what they do would be described on the card itself. The other type of cards you can get are the red cards, and these are your attack cards and raid cards. And I'll talk about these towards the end of the explanation. If at any point you play a card with this victory point symbol, you'll immediately increase your victory points on the victory point track. It's important to note that when you upgrade your HQ, that this will also be increasing your victory points. If you lose a card with one of these victory points on, you'll immediately decrease your place on the victory point track. There are five options from which to choose your action to perform, and the four main ones are given on your player board. The first is to visit the market, and when you visit the market, you'll be buying one of the market cards. The cost of the card is shown underneath the market space, so as they move along to the right, they become cheaper, even down to costing zero gold. When you buy the card, it goes into your hand and not into play. If you want to put it into play, you will need to pay that response token to do so. Also, the market does not refresh immediately. This does not happen until the end of the round. 
The second option of action is to visit the wastes. You'll simply draw a card off the top of the deck and this will go into your hand. Again, if you wish to put this into play, you'll need to pay a response token. The third option is to plan, and this gives you response tokens based on the size of your town. So if you are a small town, you get three response tokens. If you're a medium town, you'll get two. And if you're a large town, you only get the one response token for performing this action. And these will go into your resource pile. The fourth option of action is to research. Now, the amount of research that you can perform is dependent on your town size. So as you start off as a small town, you can only do one point of research. When you become a medium town, you can do two points of research. And when you reach that large town status, you're finally able to do three points of research. However, every point of research that you wish to do you'll need to pay a response token for. So if you're doing one, you'll pay one response token. If you wanted to do three points of research, you'll have to pay three response tokens. For each point of research you do, you'll place a token onto a research card. If at this point, there are a number of your research tokens equal to the research level of the card, then you gain that card. It is possible there will be other research tokens from other players, these are not included in that calculation. And when you take the card, all tokens on it are returned to their respective players. The final option not shown on your player board is to pass. Now, when you've passed, you will not be able to perform any more actions or play any cards for the rest of the round. However, when you pass, it enables you to place your player token in the empty space nearest to the market deck on the turn order track. Once all the turns are done to end the action step, you'll need to refresh the market. And to do this, you'll remove a card if it is in the zero space, and then shift all the other cards in the market down so that they become cheaper. Then this will leave you with empty spaces, which you reveal new cards from the market deck to fill. The second step is maintenance. And to begin this, you will create a production pile looking at what income you get based on the top left symbols on all the cards in your town. Once you've done this, you are then able to perform trades. You'll be able to trade your food in order to get credits. The more food you're trading, the more credits you get, or you can trade credits for food. Also, it's useful to know that response tokens can be used as food at any time. Then you'll pick which of the cards in your town you want to pay the maintenance costs for. You'll then take the required tokens from either your resource pile or from your production pile and place them on that card to show that you have paid that cost. Then you'll discard any unpaid cards and the tokens that have been used to pay for cards. Once done, you will add your production pile to your resource pile discarding any excess. The final step is to determine turn order. Now, you'll follow the same player order as you did during the actions phase, using the survivor's cards to determine that, and it works much like when passing, you'll place your player token on the first available space. As well as doing this, you will also return your survivor card to the survivor's deck. Then, starting with the player in the first turn order space, they will take their player token back, they will take the survivor's deck, and they will pick which survivor they want to use for the coming round as their deputy. Once everyone has picked their survivor and returned their player token, you will then move the round marker. If you move on to a round with an alarm underneath, you'll reveal that alarm. Then you move back round to step one of your new round until you meet the end condition for the game. Now, earlier I mentioned about attacks and raids, but I didn't explain them, so I'm going to talk about those now. Firstly, we'll talk about the normal attack cards. These are played on a player of your choosing. You don't target everyone, it's a specific person. The difficulty of the attack is shown on the bottom left of the card, and this will be dependent on what is happening in the player being attacked's town. The text at the bottom of the card then lists what will happen if the player being attacked fails to meet the difficulty of the card. 
The player being attacked will then decide what cards they're going to use to give them bonuses, response tokens, etc. Anything that will improve their dice roll. They then roll both the dice, they add on any bonuses that they have, and if the number equals or exceeds the difficulty, they have successfully fought off the attack and nothing happens. If, however, it is less than the difficulty value, then they have failed. At this point, they can choose to spend a response token to re-roll the dice, but if they can't or don't want to, then they simply suffer the fail effect that's listed on the card. Braids work very similar to the attack, with the defender choosing their bonuses and rolling the dice. However, the difficulty is actually set by the raiding player in this case. The way they do that is they choose what combat bonuses that they're going to apply and roll the dice. Adding their bonuses, that then gives the difficulty level that the defender must meet or exceed. Now, if the defender fails, therefore the raiding player wins, the raiding player may pick one of the structures in the defender's town that will be discarded, or alternatively, they can pick two resources from the defender's town and add those to their resource pile. And that is everything you need to know in order to play the Pioneers program. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, and of course if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel, as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching, and bye for now.